the Shure SM57 versus the SM58. Which one of these should you buy? I'll let you know my thoughts and give you my own definitive answer and also test your ears along with each mic. All that and more coming right up. Oh, I nearly forgot. Good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Han Solo. Today we're doing the first video in a new series, the Versus series. We're pitting two legendary mics against each other, the Shure SM57 versus the Shure SM58. Both mics are leaders in their respective applications, but which one should you choose? I'm going to be switching between both mics as we go along so you can get a good sense of each of them, from a spoken word perspective at least. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos when they come out. The SM58 is a well-known mic that's been used mainly for live applications since 1966. It's also used in many studio, news stations, radio, and other applications as well. You'll likely find one as the main vocal mic of singers all over the world for their live concerts. You've seen it a million times, I'm sure. The SM57 is also a well-known mic, and it's been a studio staple workhorse mic since 1965. You've heard this mic in so many of your favorite records for almost 60 years. It's used in the studio and live for drum miking, guitar cap miking, and for main and backing vocals as well. It's used for broadcasting applications too. You will also find it's used for many sound effects applications due to its insane sound pressure level allowance. Think loud sound effects recordings like um, demolishing buildings or uh, rocket blast offs, that kind of stuff. Okay, let's have a closer look at each of them. Here is the SM58. It's a standard mic design that is well known across the planet. It features an all metal mesh grill that sits atop a tapered all metal handle. Inside the grill is a layer of fabric that helps quell plosives. It weighs just over 300 grams, which is almost two thirds of a pound. It does not feel cheap. It feels well made and authentic. You could use it to hammer a nail or you could use it in actual battle and it would still continue to work just fine. The frequency response is 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz. The output impedance is 300 ohms and it's a unidirectional cardioid pattern dynamic mic. It measures, oh, hold on a sec. Let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. <laughs> you know, this measuring tape wasn't manufactured at all. It just blooped into existence in 1954. I picked it up at CERN in 2012. <laughs> Just over six inches long and two inches at the ball. Here's what it sounds like without an external pop screen. Paper babies appeared with little fanfare. Paper, 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 paper. While the built-in pop filter helps, it's not completely resilient to plosives. When using this mic in a studio for singing or for spoken word, I definitely use a pop screen just like this one. For live applications though, it's just fine as is. The SM58 can be yours for a hundred USD American dollars. That's it. Now let's look at the SM57. It's got the exact same metal handle as the SM58, but a completely different grill. The SM57 doesn't have a ball shaped grill. Instead, it has a very small flatter grill that has a little indent in the middle. The grill is housed inside a rugged plastic housing. There is no layer of fabric under the grill that protects against plosives. The frequency response is 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz. Its output impedance is 310 ohms, and it is also a unidirectional cardioid pattern dynamic mic. It weighs just over 280 grams, so a tiny bit lighter than the SM58, but still just as robust. Built like tank, strong like bull. It measures, oh, hold on a second, let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. <laughs> you know, just over six inches long and one and a quarter inches at the grill. Here's what the SM57 sounds like without an external pop screen. 
paper babies appeared with little fanfare. Paper, 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 paper babies. Paper, paper, paper. <laughs> it is mega sensitive to plosives because it was mainly designed as an instrument mic. In a studio setting for vocals, I'd recommend using an external pop screen like this one. For live, I would just use a foam pop screen and just pop it on there. The Shure SM57 can be yours also for 100 US dollars. By now, you've got a pretty good idea of how both of these mics sound for spoken word. Let's do a blind guitar cab test. I've recorded two of the same chord progressions with each mic in the exact same position on the guitar cabinet for each take. Dead center, on access to the speaker cone and about an inch away from it. I played a Godin Session HT directly into the dirty channel of a Crate Blue Voodoo 50 watt head and then into a 212 Buddha cab. We'll do a blind test. I'll A, B it for you. A, B. Mic A, mic B. Let me know if you can tell which mic is which. I had to increase the gain on one of the mics by two decibels so they would be somewhat equal in loudness. Okay, here we go. Here's some quick noodling in a complete different key. I used a Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive mod pedal in there for this one. Okay, here's acoustic guitar doing the original chord progression. Could you tell which mic was which? Pause the video and write your guess right now in the comments. I'll wait on pause until you're done. Uh, but don't keep me on pause for too long. I, I still haven't watched the newest Rings of Power episode. So. Did you guess? Okay, let's reveal the mics. Mic A was the SM57. Mike B was the SM58, obviously. Were you correct? Did you get it right? Okay, time for the verdict. Analysis. Both of these mics are amazing, and each for their own special reasons. They're both built to outlast your own life and become family heirlooms for generations to come. So the construction is solid for both of these. They both sound incredible and have both been top choices for so many professional applications all over the world. They sound killer on whatever loud sources you're pointing them at, even if they're a little bit loud. The 58 excels at live vocal performances and even spoken word. The built-in pop filter helps minimize plosives and is a first choice for pro singers on earth. It also sounds just fine when used to mic guitar cabinets. It's got a hotter output, but it's just a little darker than the 57, you can really tell. The 57 excels at everything, but it is very sensitive to plosives, so an extra pop screen is absolutely needed for any singing or spoken word applications. It's got a, a much more pronounced high-end articulation to it too. I had to boost the gain on this by two decibels in post to match that of the 58. So which to buy? I told you at the beginning of this video that I would give you an answer, and so I shall. If I had to choose only one mic between both of these, I would choose the 57. It's just so versatile. Just add a pop screen for vocals and you're done. Of course, I'd choose both if I could. 
I'd prefer nothing else for live vocals than the SM58. In fact, I've used this exact SM58 for live vocals for 25, I don't know how many years, a lot of years. It's seen a lot of stages, different cities, beer, sweat, and a hell of a lot of saliva and mouth junk. It's also better for feedback control, and the darker sound helps minimize potential ear-piercing frequencies. Uh, you know, when you have those issues in the top end when uh, pushed loud out of, an, out of a PA. If you're starting a podcast or YouTube channel or the like, and you had to choose between both mics, either would do you well. But a 57 will be something you'll always use for so many things forever. There are songs you've heard on the radio that have been made using nothing but the SM57. Is there still radio? I think so. The song For Emma Forever Ago by Bon Iver, Bon Iver, Bon Iver, was recorded entirely using an SM57. I mean, entirely. Look up the song. It's pretty cool. Another one is Sufjan Stevens, Sufjan, Sufjan, and the album Greetings from Michigan. The entire album of 21 songs was entirely recorded on two SM57s. A good song from that album is called Romulus. Check that out too. So there's a reason that SM57s are chosen across the globe for so many things. That's my choice. Yours can differ entirely, of course. Which one would you choose? The 57 or the 58? Let me know in the comments. Well, that'll just about do it for me. Oh, and one more thing. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> it's a ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Bye now. End transmission. And you can watch these videos too. They also just blooped into existence just now. So there you go. Watch these ones. Thanks. Bye.